So we started to work with gold nanoparticles, not because we were thinking about there would be a gold rush, just because somebody asked me uh, from Saarbrücken, he had a sample, uh, gold nanoparticles embedded in titanium dioxide, whether I could do some pump probe measurements on them. So I did that for him, and that was in 1995. So we started quite early, uh, and when we had our results, we could publish them, but when we went to a conference, we never knew where to put them, that talk in which session, because these sessions were never about gold nanoparticles or about plasmonics. Nowadays, as you can see here from the published papers, only when you put in to Web of Science gold nanoparticles, if you do plasmonics, you don't get the result anymore because it's uh, too many papers. Uh, so it goes exponentially up, and also the citation of all these papers go exponentially up. So, as you said, many people joined that game, many people added um, their results to this field, and it's really, truly a, a rush on doing nanoplasmonics nowadays. Okay, so what's the point, actually? I mean, these gold nanoparticles, they give this colored uh, impressions, but this cannot be the point for a gold rush. So I would like to... The main point is actually that these gold nanoparticles can be seen as very efficient antennas. And you know what an antenna is, uh, since you know what a radio is. Uh, maybe young people today, since they don't see their antenna anymore on their mobile phones, it's still in there, but they don't see it anymore. Uh, they're not aware that this antenna is really important. So a radio without an antenna would not receive uh, a lot of signal and it would not run. So if you want to um, catch the radiation, the electromagnetic radiation uh, from the, the channel, uh, then you have to have an antenna which has to catch the radiation and put it into the radio that you can play that. So this works if you look at the electromagnetic spectrum uh, at very long wavelengths. So the radio works here at long radio waves, uh, AM, FM, and uh, your mobile phones, they work at about in the microwave regime at one gigahertz or three gigahertz. Uh, but these gold nanoparticles, they give you the ability, and that's it for the antenna part. If you want to play antenna games here in that regime, or in the visible regime where the human eye is sensitive, then, oops, sorry, that was too quick, then one can use uh, gold nanoparticles. And that's, I would say, 70% of the point where they get so, where they got so exciting. So, a gold nanoparticle is the antenna, a molecule can be the radio, and the radiation is just at another frequency, namely in the visible regime. So, what one can do now, as a radio, uh, well, this is not a radio, uh, this is just the opposite. Uh, this gold nanoparticle can, first of all, help the molecule to get light from the molecule, which is very small, out to this radiation field because the molecule is so small, it's much smaller than the wavelengths of light, that's why it has problems to get rid of the energy to emit uh, light. But the, but the antenna helps it and can enhance that so that us can see the molecule much more easily uh, and get the light. On the other hand, and this is uh, what the radio is now, the gold nanoparticle can also help to get light in the molecule. Uh, so, if for example, uh, you want to get sunlight into the molecule, you put the gold nanoparticle in front of the molecule and then absorb it uh, at a much higher rate. So that's the radio part. Okay, so there are lots of experiments on that. Uh, I think a very nice one to visualize that, that light can be taken out of molecules by these uh, gold nanoparticles. This is an experiment done in the group of uh, Nick van Hulst. Uh, so they made not gold nanoparticles, but little uh, tips on a, uh, on, a, on a fiber tip. And these are uh, gold tips here. And when they scan over a surface where there are fluorescent molecules, then one can see whenever that tip hits that molecule, the light uh, shoots out of the molecule and one can detect that easily uh, with a, a CCD or with a, a, another photo detector. And that shows how these antennas help light to get out of the molecule. Um, very impressively. 
So we did some work actually together with a, a company, Roche Diagnostics, uh, where we put this antenna again next to fluorescent dye molecules, uh, but used this antenna effect in order to detect some uh, protein molecules uh, in, uh, in the solution. This was actually uh, not an unimportant protein, but a troponin T. That's a, a protein which gets uh, released after a heart attack. So uh, physicians want to measure lowest concentration of that troponin T uh, in blood. And so we put an antibody on the gold particle and another antibody on the dye. And when they get both attached, then this antenna changes the fluorescence of that dye, and this can be used for detecting the presence of that uh, troponin T. And it was <coughs> quite sensitive method to um, to measure quite a method to detect these troponin T uh, protein molecules. Okay, so. An antenna cannot only be a spherical gold nanoparticle uh, because when you think about antennas in a macroscopic world, uh, there are lots of different shapes. And I found this uh, on the web. Uh, even uh, aliens want to enhance their antenna possibilities and uh, have some cosmetic surgery on that. So one antenna which is a bit more uh, fancy is one this is called the biconal antenna. So one takes two antenna left and right and puts the receiver in the middle. That's actually something what people did a lot also us with uh, gold nanoparticles, and that works in the same way. So we did an experiment where we had a fluorescent uh, sphere here uh, and tried to put around two gold nanoparticles from both sides. And we did that by using an AFM tip, which is just a mechanical tip, which can play something like hockey, with these gold nanoparticles on the surface, and then we embedded that fluorescent sphere bit in between these two gold nanoparticles. And here, up there, is always the AFM picture, which just shows the presence of these three particles, and then we shift them together until they are, the fluorescent bead is really uh, sitting in between these two gold nanoparticles. And this is the fluorescence of this uh, fluorescent bead, and you can see when you really close it down, the fluorescence goes up, because it's sitting now as a receiver right at the so-called hot spot in between these two gold nanoparticles. Okay, but even two gold nanoparticles uh, or these biconal antennas is not really sophisticated. In the real macroscopic world, you have uh, even more uh, complicated antenna structures. Andre Rogac took me yesterday to a place where I could have uh, made even better pictures from Hong Kong, how uh, complicated uh, antennas look like, but I...